In this video, we'll optimize high-resolution 3D scan model, we'll retopologize the vertices, and then we'll bake the texture maps. So first, let's bring in the 3D scan model into Maya. And if your model is too small, you can simply just scale it up. So here I put a value of 300. And then hit 6 key, you're going to display the textures. The texture maps looks great on the model, but the original texture doesn't look great. Also, if you double click the vertices, and you will notice that you can separate your model into pieces. That is because in the process of photogeometry, the program analyzes the photo you took and generate individual points. So that's why the model is not in one mesh. What I will do is I'm going to select all vertices. Hold on, shift, right click, go to merge vertices. This is going to merge the separated vertices together. However, you don't want each point to merge to the nearby points. So you can lower down the distance the threshold. And then we can clean the transformation value by freeze transformation. And don't forget to denote its history. And then we'll go to File, Export Selection, and we'll export this model as a high-resolution model in OBG format. In the second step, I'm going to open a small program called Instant Meshes. And I'll open the high-resolution model into this program. So this is the original model, the high-resolution model. And here you can put a number for how many vertices you want the final model to have. And you can click on Solve, and you're going to preview the wireframe. If you don't like the layout, you can click on the ruler and draw a line of how you want the vertices to go. And click on Solve again, you're going to preview the wireframes. If you like it, you can click on Export Mesh, Extract Mesh. And this is the final mesh. You can save it and name it to a low-resolution model. In step 3, we're going to bring this low-resolution model back into Maya. And first, you can see that the model display hard shadow on the edges, you can go to Mesh Display and apply Soften Edge. Now I can bring in the high resolution model and place it on the side for references. When I record this video tutorial, I forgot to apply the Soften Edge, so that's why my no resolution model display hard edges. But on your side, remember to apply Soften Edge. Here I'm going to introduce two methods, UV mapping of the no resolution model we have created. The first method is for beginners to use. So you're going to select the model and apply automatic UV mapping. And once you're done, don't forget to freeze transformation and delete history. And you're ready to export your model and you're ready to move on to the next step. Again, this method is very easy. Uh, it's only one click. And the downside is you're going to have a lot of texture borders. The second method, we're going to use a bonus tool called Unfold3D. If you don't have bonus tools installed in Maya, you can just Google Maya bonus tools and you will find it. Install the version you want and then restart your program. And you should see a bonus tool will appear here. But before we move on, remember to go to the plugin manager, search for 3D, and make sure the Unfold3D plugins checked on. Now, we can go back to the bonus tool and start to use the Auto Unwrap tool. Check on Unfold3D. 
and Enter tool. And then you can select any edges you want to add as the texture border. Once you have finished it, you can click on Continue. In some cases, you may have this error message. Usually, when you receive this message, it means your vertices may still be separated. You can just go back with the vertices, select all of them, and merge vertices. and go back to object mode and enter the tool again. The edges you previously added disappeared, but don't worry, just click on add border and they'll appear again. Click on add border one more time and click on continue. Go to the UV editor, you'll find the tool has separated the UVs based on the texture border you added. If you are not satisfied with it, for example if you want to separate these two walls, you can simply click on Go Back and revise your texture borders. Click on continue again, and then it will update the UV shells. Click on done if you are satisfied with it. The UV shells will look perfect, but will have one final issue. The scale proportion of each UV shell is different. We can simply fix this by selecting all UVs, go to modify, and apply a layer out. Now you can see that each UV shell has the same scale proportion. Now we can do a final touch on the UV shells by manually positioning them to save more space. Also make sure all the UV shells are not get too close to each other. Then, we can go to Hypershade and assign initial material to the model and denote unused materials. When I record this video tutorial, I forgot to apply the softening edge, so that's why my no resolution model display hard edges. But on your side, remember to apply softening edge. Finally, remember to freeze its transformation and denote its history. And then, we can export our mesh into an OBG format. I just showed you the two methods for UV mapping, and I'll use the second one for the rest of the steps. I duplicated this model and named it as a low-resolution model. I also duplicated the original texture maps and renamed them as original maps.
Then I duplicate the high resolution model and paste it in the same folder with my low resolution model. Now open Modbox, go to File, Import, and import the high resolution model. And if you have this error message, sometimes it says the UVs are getting too close together. That's fine, just click on Keep All. This is due to the vertices on our model are too dense, but this is totally fine because this is the original high resolution model. You can simply go to Display, check on Mesh Error, and it will disappear. I recommend rename this mesh so you can recognize it. Right click on it, assign a new material. And I'll rename the material as Material 1 High Resolution. Select the material, go to Nair panel, Paint Nair, and right click, Import Nair. Here, we'll import the diffuse map to the diffuse channel. Import the ambient occlusion map to the diffuse channel as well. For the ambient occlusion map, we'll change the blending mode to multiply. This will add ambient shadow to our model. Import the normal map to the normal map channel. Import the roughness map to the gloss channel. Now we have imported a high resolution model with all the texture maps. We can go ahead and import a low resolution model. It will again remind us there are some mesh errors. You can click on Keep All. Here we can hide the high resolution mesh. Select the no resolution mesh, right click, assign new material, and we'll rename it as Material 2 No Resolution. We don't have any paint layers for the no resolution mesh because we'll transfer the texture paintings from the high resolution mesh to the no resolution mesh. Now, let's turn on the high resolution mesh. If the mesh displayed a weird blue color, you can simply right click, assign existing material, the material 1, back to it. Alright, so now we are ready to bake texture maps. Select the no resolution mesh, go to Extract Texture Maps, New Operation, and click on Normal Map. Add the no resolution mesh as the target model. Add the high resolution mesh as the source model. For the method, choose recasting. And you can keep distance as default. For the image size, it's better to use the same number on your original texture maps, so you are not losing any resolution. For the output, choose Maya soft image and tangent coordinate. And save your texture map as export n as normal map image format set as JPEG and click on Extract. It took 40 seconds on my computer to process it and this is how it looks. We'll go to Extract Texture Map again, New Operation. And this time, we'll transfer the pin layers. Select the No Resolution Mesh, add to the target model, check off Smooth Target Models. Add the High Resolution Mesh to the source model. For the method and distance, use the same setting that we have used earlier. For the image size, choose the same as the source. For the transfer pin layers, 
add to the existing nails so you're not override the old nails and click on extract now you can see the texture maps have been transferred to the new resolution mesh Make sure you select the no resolution mesh and go to the near panel. The first near is supposed to be the ambient occlusion map. Second near is the diffuse map. The near under the gloss channel is roughness map. And this near is supposed to be the original normal map. We don't need to use it so you can hide it. Now you can export each near. By right click on the nair, you can export the selected nair. So well here we'll put export AO, and this is the exported map. And this was the original one. Select the second nair, right click, and we'll export it as a diffuse map. And this is the exported map. And this is the original one. We can also right click on the diffuse channel and export the whole channel merged. Make sure to put a different name so you can recognize it. This will blend the ambient occlusion map into the diffuse map. Right click on the roughness map and export it. Now we have done export all of the texture maps and you are good to use the new resolution model with the texture maps in any game engine or animation. By turning on the wireframe, you can see now all of the details are generated by the texture maps.